Daniel Harmon. Oh, we got a lot of questions from Daniel Harmon today, but I'm just picking the questions that look interesting to me and then, then reading the name. Uh, so, Daniel, I guess you're asking good questions. Good on you, dude. Um, did the new iFlight Cruiser with GLS included that JB reviewed recently come with GPS Rescue Failsafe setup? No. iFlight does not ship any of their bind and flies with GPS Rescue enabled. They leave it to you to turn GPS Rescue on. Betaflight GPS Rescue is not really reliable enough that uh, that you would want someone to just trust it blindly like with dji they have an incredibly sophisticated return to home rescue system and and they just you just assume that it's working correctly beta flight cannot deliver that level of confidence so uh they ship with it disabled and you need to turn it on um Todd Burke wants to know, why isn't there an inline battery connector that keeps a drone from draining down the battery when you, like, it's stuck in a tree? Uh, and the answer to that, Blunty, we've, have we had this question before? I know we have. Yep, we have. It's on the Clips channel, I believe. Oh, well, okay. Is it up right now? I think so. I'm going to go uh, to Joshua Bardwell Livestream Clips. Like it's like remote disconnect or something like that. It's not yeah. not too old. Uh, let's see here. Yeah, top right. Here we go. Here Why go. aren't there any remote battery disconnects for FPV drones? It's a five-minute clip. I'm not going to play the whole clip, uh, but you can check that out over on the Joshua Bardwell Livestream Clips channel. The short answer is that quadcopters pull a lot of current. They pull between, uh, you know... A lot of them, minimum like 30 amps peak. And for for racing drones, you could pull 60, 80, 100 or more amps. And the short version is that a switch that can switch 100 amps at a time is big and heavy and just unwieldy and impossible to put on a little multirotor. Like if you had a, a, you know, a 20 pound octocopter, maybe it would make sense to put a relay on it that could switch that, but uh, not on the littler quads. It's not like you could just get a little DC switch and because that thing would burn out under the current that it has to switch. Okay. Real Reality asks, I just built my first quad and it's a dead cat. Anything I should be worried about compared to flying an X-frame uh, in liftoff? No. Um, the difference between a dead cat and an X-frame is pretty small. And the when you go from liftoff to the real world, there's a fair amount of difference. So the, the extremely subtle difference between an X-frame and a dead cat is going to be more than outweighed by the relatively large difference between a simulator and reality. You're not going to notice any difference. But why not a mechanical switch that would put a metal piece from in between? You're, you're describing a relay or a solenoid. That's what you're describing. The switch wouldn't have to switch that many amps because you would be stationary and not running. The, the, but the switch mechanism would have to carry the current. There are inside, inside the switch, there are going to be two pieces of metal. And those two pieces of metal will have to separate and come together to make and break the connection. And the current that the motors are pulling has to flow through that mechanism whatever form it takes. And that is when that has to carry a hundred amps that, that gets to be big and heavy. I mean, if you're trying to argue that it's not just the arcing of switching while there is high current, which is an, an additional problem, it's the need to have a switch me mechanism that can carry 100, 100 plus amps. All right. 
Ghost Branch FPV. Good to see you, Ghost Branch. Always see Ghost Branch in the Discord, not always in the comments. Um, have DJI ever improved on the dynamic range of the O3 camera, or is it still as bad as it was when it launched? I I don't think that they've improved it, not the dynamic range. I've heard some people say that they've improved the low light sensitivity. Um, is anybody flying with the O3 on the daily? Can you comment on whether the dynamic range has improved? I actually still fly the Vistas mostly. I only have one quad with the O3 in it. Why not remote enable the smoke stopper switch? A smoke stopper maxes out at two amps. A smoke stopper that could switch 100 plus amps would be a solenoid or something like that. It would be much bigger and heavier. There's no way around this, guys. You're not going to like... I don't know. The problem is you start to get into layers of MOSFETs if you try to do some kind of bridging thing where you're like trying to carry low current and then switch to the high current when you don't need the yeah, high that's current a, and like do that's fancy a relay. weird yeah. You've yeah. you've invented a relay. Congratulations. No, what they're trying to do though is control the low side of the relay with another FET. That's my understanding of the situation. And then you get one sure. cut off, you don't get to cut it back on. You don't you only pass through the current when you're ready to pass through the current to kill it. But it's like it's very convoluted because if you don't have contact anymore, you can't do it. There's no way to fail safe that. You're running through a different you know what I mean? There's a there's eighteen different reasons why that doesn't really make any sense. So Yeah. Yeah. You think they could do it if they only needed to switch it off and not on. Yeah, but what's the practicality of that? How much equipment do you still you still well, need and a relay? How often, I mean. how often do you end up in a tree? Right? right. So we've got this failure point. We've got this additional complexity and additional weight. And then like one flight out of 100, you end up in a tree and you're like, woo, I saved a $25 battery. Yay. <laughs> like just let the battery die and suck it up and eat the battery. Sorry. I mean, for, 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 you know, a 20 or $25 battery anyway. <laughs> what if you used a servo to unplug an XT60? How big of a servo would you need to have enough force to unplug an XT60? I'm just trying to be clever. When you're trying to be clever, when, when everybody says that this problem doesn't have a good solution, and then you try to be clever. There's two possibilities. One is that you're about to invent something that no one's ever invented before and prove everybody wrong. And the other is that you just don't understand the reasons why it doesn't work. And one of the things that frustrates the hell out of me is people who, and I'm not, I'm not pointing a finger at anybody in the chat. I'm just sort of pontificating. But one of the things that frustrates the hell out of me is people who try to come up with the brilliant solution that no one ever thought of before, before they take the time to understand all of the reasons why the solutions people have tried before haven't worked. Because what usually ends up happening is they end up reinventing the wheel, going down a path that doesn't work. And everybody's like, hey, what you're doing isn't going to work. And here's why we tried that. And they're like, oh, la, la, la. I'm going to I'm going to be the brilliant one who proves everybody wrong. And sometimes you are. There, are. there are people in the world who were like, hey, I'm going to do this thing. And everybody was like, you can't do that. It doesn't work. And they were like, F you. And then, you know, they, re they invent something brilliant. But I think that far more often when someone invents something brilliant that no one ever did before, they also have a deep understanding of the things that didn't work and why they don't work so they can focus their energy on finding something that does work. And when somebody's like, I wanna do this thing, and everybody's like, well, here's why that doesn't work. And they're like, no, but don't you see? I am brilliant, I know the answer. Like take five minutes and show me that you understand why what I said, it doesn't work. And then let's invent something brilliant that no one's ever thought of before. We get any comment on the dynamic range, Plenty? Has it gotten better? Anybody? Is anybody talking about that? 
Not really. Everybody's bitching yeah. about this situation. <laughs> we just need a servo with a scalpel blade that chops the positive wire. That'll do it. Got it. That's the solution. <laughs> Remote disconnect. It is an interesting question. What if you only need to disconnect? You don't need to reconnect. You want a remote disconnect. Like what if you were just willing to chop the wire? Yeah, but practically who would produce that product? <laughs> An explosive fuse that blows up the XT60. <laughs> Blinty, what if you, okay. <laughs> okay, now, now I'm just getting silly. What if you had a spring-loaded XT60? Okay, can you picture it? You press it together and you clip it so that it's holding the spring tension. And then somehow, when you want to disconnect, you like flick that thing off and the spring pushes the XT60 apart. Yeah. And that mechanism goes off while in flight. And then. No, no, no. That would never happen. That would never happen. 